Hey guys, Nick here, and if you know any pedantic science nerds, chances are you've probably been corrected about C, the speed of light, the velocity that Albert Einstein so famously said could not be surpassed. Your devoted friends will tell you that it's not the speed of light, rather the speed of light in a vacuum, while with recent breakthroughs in examining supernovas, your friends might be wrong. Physicists have long held that photons should move through a vacuum at a final velocity of the very storied 299,792,458 meters per second. If confirmed, these findings would mean that our existing theories about C would become idealized and that the intrinsic physics of light would cause it to slow itself down from the predicated ideal. After all these years, the speed of light may be significantly slower than when we once thought. It's pretty cool. Let's check it out. Surprisingly, the data used here comes from a supernova astronomers observed back in February of 1987, and something really weird happened. The stellar collapse produced the expected burst of neutrinos and optical light, but this time they confounded traditional theory. Theoretically, the star's collapse should have emitted a burst of neutrinos three hours before a burst of light, and from that point on, there should have been constant in-keeping pulses. However, the light arrived roughly 7.7 .7 hours after the neutrinos, and assuming that they didn't travel faster than C, there are only three possible explanations. One, the photons traveled slower than C. Two, they were emitted later than expected. And three, they originated from a totally different and separate event. Many people claim that the third option is the most plausible and likely what had actually happened, but now scientists have claims for the first, that light actually doesn't travel at its predicated speed in a vacuum, hence the Einsteinian error. Typically, when moving through mediums like air or water, it's the particles that make up the air or water that slow down the effective speed of light. However, in a vacuum, there's no such medium and light is able to travel unrestricted. However, there is what's called vacuum polarization. When a photon travels through a vacuum, it spontaneously splits into a positron-electron pair, almost like a virtual pair of positive and negative particles that quickly recombine into their familiar photon structure. Vacuum polarization produces an infinitesimally small gravitational potential that, though small in magnitude, would produce a gravitational pull between both particles and have a significant impact on its final energy impact. The reason why this has gone unobserved for so long is because it's hard to quantify the effect that vacuum polarization has on photons. To put a number on this would be like trying to count the number of marbles in an Earth-sized container. But take that effect in 1987, where the photons needed to travel 168,000 light years to reach the us, and vacuum polarization has a cumulative impact, easily enough to account for the observed delay of 4.7 hours. So is Einstein wrong? Well, no, not really, but let's talk about that. Obviously, there's a ton more research that needs to go into this, so until then, most of this is speculative. Sure, it'd be great to have more of these neutrino photon delay times, but it's not like that happens every day, so we can't just disavow ourselves from Einstein that quickly. 